Do you remember Liz Truss? I won't blame you if you don't. She was Prime Minister of Britain for all of 45 days. Her policies were disastrous. They plunged the British pound to an all-time low. You don't recover from that sort of thing. But Liz Truss still has hope. She's trying to make a comeback ahead of next year's election. Her strategy? Taiwan. Truss has announced that she will visit the island next week. What for? To show solidarity, she says. But let's be real. Liz Truss is not going to show solidarity. She's going to revive her political career. And what better way than a visit to Taiwan? A former prime minister bravely standing up against China. Normally, it would make for great headlines. But this time, even her own party is not amused. The chair of the Foreign Affairs Committee has criticized the plan. She's also a Tory, by the way. And she says the visit is the worst kind of Instagram diplomacy. And we agree. Taiwan isn't some campaigning ground for Western leaders. It's a self-ruled island of 23 million people. These leaders fly on private jets. They wine and dine with Taiwan's leaders, make some statements about democracy and freedoms, and then they fly out. It's the people of Taiwan who deal with the consequences. Do you remember Nancy Pelosi's visit? She was retiring as U.S. Speaker last year. She wanted something to cement her legacy. So what did she do? She went to Taiwan. Pelosi's trip ended without any hiccups. But do you know what happened afterwards? China carried out six days of live fire drills. They were this close to war. Dozens of fighter jets buzzed near Taiwan's airspace. PLA warships sailed on the horizon. Imagine living in that situation under the constant threat of war. Nancy Pelosi did not feel any of that fear or concern. She was safely on a plane back home. Pelosi used Taiwan to create her legacy. Liz Truss wants to use Taiwan to relaunch her career. It's selfish and dangerous politics. Does that mean no Western leader should visit Taiwan? Of course not. But visits should have a genuine objective. It should be over and above material assistance. Right now, that's not the case. We keep hearing about new U.S. military packages for Taiwan. Another one is about Taiwan? to be cleared. It's worth $500 million. But how many of these weapons have actually been delivered? The backlog is huge. Some reports say it's worth $19 billion. Just think about that. Weapons worth $19 billion are yet to be delivered. So put yourself in the shoes of Taiwan's leaders. What would you want? The weapons you were promised? Or another symbolic visit followed by Chinese war games? I think I know the answer. In this case, the war games may not even happen. Why is that? Because even China doesn't care about Liz Truss. Look at this report in the Global Times. It says, Washed up political figure Liz Truss eyes political capital through Taiwan visit. As they say, even a dead clock is right twice a day. Here, the Global Times is right. My point is, the West should focus on actual assistance, whether it's weapons, financial aid, or political support. Such visits are nothing but distractions, and dangerous distractions at that. And this is not just about Taiwan. The West's Indo-Pacific policy has historically been like this. High on talk, low on action. Fiji's former Prime Minister summed it up best. He was speaking to U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken last year. Listen to what he said. Fiji and our small state neighbors have felt at times, to borrow an American term, like a flyover country. Small dots spotted from plain windows of leaders en route to meetings where they spoke about us rather than with us. That's a damning but true assessment. But now things seem to be changing. Joe Biden is scheduled to visit Papua New Guinea on the 22nd of May. Reports say he will sign a defense and security pact. No secrets who the target is. It's China. The U.S. will also double financial aid to $32 million. Out of this, $25 million is for climate action, which is all great. But the question is, is it too late? China has expanded its Pacific footprint in the last two decades. I have some numbers for you. From 2006 to 2017, China's aid to the Pacific was around $1.5 billion. The type of aid is also important. Most of it is in the form of big infrastructure projects, like ports, roads and airports. Chinese companies are also in the game. Their investments reached $958 million by 2017. Chances are it's now crossed a billion. Trade is growing. 
It was $153 million in 1992. It increased to $5.3 billion in 2021. And the U.S. stood by as all of this happened, as China tried to displace the West in the Pacific. But last year, things changed. China tried to sign a security pact with 10 Pacific nations. The plan failed, but Washington woke up. Biden decided to host specific leaders at the White House. He also announced an $800 million financial package. Fun fact, the U.S. Congress still hasn't cleared it. These delays have given China a foothold in the Pacific. But there's still hope. The rejection of China's security pact is evidence of that. The U.S. must use this opportunity to push ahead. Let's see what Biden's Papua New Guinea visit can achieve on that front. This time, he's not flying over the country. He's actually making a stop.